Evening, gang, and welcome to our little Tuesday night uh, music chat and phone-in show here at Reach On Air. Chris Reardon, Tuesday night, Reach On Air. Yes, indeed. Welcome to another fun-packed show. Thank you, Shania, for sending in a text there, my darling. Much appreciated. You've got to be very careful there at what you're reading and what you aren't reading. Uh, I must admit to you, this evening, it's Chris Reardon with you on this Tuesday night, together to, for the next uh, two hours, also on uh, TikTok. OK, if you want to join us on TikTok, uh, you can do so. My TikTok username is Chris Reardon UK, all right? TikTok username is Chris Reardon UK. Or on the YouTube, you can join us on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK on there as well. Same thing. Or, of course, for the best, undoubtedly the best quality sound, tune in to Reach On Air. Reachonair.com. If you've got an Amazon device somewhere, say Amazon, play radio station Reach On Air, and uh, she will burst into life, OK? I must admit, I'm doing a little bit of a Ross Pat Zelt tonight, in which case I'm winging it. I'm winging it a little bit, but not like um, I've just walked in here with, with nothing at all on my plate, because I have got some bits and pieces here, right? OK, admittedly from last week when we didn't use them. <laughs> I've got a little bit here from uh, today, which I didn't use on the um, radio show this morning that I do uh, Monday to Friday, 9 till 10 o'clock here at Reach On Air. OK, so I have got some bits and pieces. I've thrown together a few news stories and stuff like that. So there we go. All right. Uh, there is a phone number if you want to join in with the show today. The phone number is open now. Uh, I'll give you some bits and pieces to chat about. Or if you want to chat about anything else, that's OK as well. And the phone number open now is 020 3477 All right. 020 3477 is my local London number. OK, so I hope you'll be able to uh, uh, call in at some point. Whoever that might be, I do not know. Let's just say hello to some of you this evening. Text again. There's also a text number. If you want to text in at any point, the text number is up in the corner of the screen. I'd have to be very careful how I read numbers. Is, was it on the last shot? I think it was on the last... Sh not the last show, the last shot. We keep getting a, a, a TikTok ban for giving out the phone number. I believe that is the case. Now, I just want to try an experiment now, OK? I want to try cutting the sound to the microphone, which feeds, I believe, although I could be wrong, I believe the TikTok. So I'm going to choose a person who I know will give me an honest answer. Vera, there you go, Vera. Vera, I'm now going to count to ten. You should hear me stop at five. And anyone listening on Reach On Air um, and... YouTube should hear me continue to count right down to the end, OK? So, Vera, tell me if I stop at five, OK? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Did that work, Vera? If so, we've solved the problem, because every time I give out the phone number, I'll just cut the mic to the um, uh, to the TikTok app, because that appears... We're pretty sure that that's what the problem is. Um... So it doesn't cut the mic. Oh, well, that's a blooming shame, doesn't it? Because that does say main. Are you coming out of the main there? That's main, that's main. I'll try again. Let me try again. Uh, uh, unless you're picking me up from the mic instead of the equipment there. That's very annoying. I'm going to try again, uh, Vera, OK? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Did that cut the mic, Vera? Did that cut the mic to the TikTok? I, I, I have a terrible feeling you're not picking up the music from the desk, but I'm not sure. That did cut the mic, yes? Excellent, excellent. OK, so oh, that's interesting. That's interesting because I'm using... Fo There's a button here. There's, I have two buttons next to, like, a slurger, right? One says sub. And as far as I'm concerned, the sub button sends the show to reach on air and YouTube. And the main sends the show to my amplifier, my headphones and TikTok, except it doesn't seem to cut the power to TikTok. Well, that's very, very strange. I'll be your sub. Yeah, I bet you will. I don't know. I am one. 
<laughs> People are wondering what that is now. Anyway, it's lovely of you to join us uh, on this Tuesday night. As I say, uh, let's read some of these messages first. Uh, hello to George Bonds. Good evening, George. Gary Ross is there, who says, all right, hope you're keeping well. Me and Leslie are looking forward to tonight's banter, mayhem to begin. Oh, it's always mayhem, dear. It's always mayhem on this program, you know, especially tonight, because I, I don't feel I've done enough to prepare. What's that saying now? They say, um, um, oh, was it prepare to? Oh, I, I can't remember the saying. I know it's pre don't prepare, prepare to fail or something like that. What's, what's that saying now? Can't remember what that is. Anyway, Shania says you can trust me. I know that, Shania. What were you being a good Catholic girl, my darling? Yes, thank you, Shania. Gorgeous lady. And a very good evening to uh, Mr. Mark Bowles. Good morning, Mark. Now, you appear to be quite upbeat, so I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. That's all I'll say to you. You might want to send me a private message. Well, you can use a text. No one can see that. Only me, darling. All right. And a very good evening to Maureen uh, in London. She's enjoying watching the Lego videos. Very relaxing. Thank you, Maureen. I, I can't believe people like to sit there and just see me put together these little bricks. Of course, there wasn't one this morning and uh, there probably won't be one tomorrow morning either uh, because I've been away, as you well know, and I'll tell you a little bit about that later on, unless someone calls in, in which case I'll take a call. But yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased that you're enjoying those, Maureen, and others. I seem to get the same people um, commenting, there's one, is it, is it flop something, flop something that on YouTube or whatever, and uh, indeed on TikTok as well, which is great. That's fantastic news, so thank you very much for that. Uh, over on TikTok, a very good evening to uh, Dan Woodhouse, evening to you, uh, and Jason, and lovely Vera from Vera's Choice in the Morning, good evening to you, my darling. All right, LaBelle's there in New York. Hello, LaBelle, beautiful, beautiful lady LaBelle. Do you know, every time I look at you, you look more and more stunning. How do you do that? I mean, is there any advice for me, this ageing DJ sitting here in front of you uh, this morning? Or this evening, rather? <laughs> and hello to DJ Sparky as well. DJ Sparky's in the house. A very good evening to you. Uh, Mark, let's have a look there. Um... I'd, I'd happily offer you that um, that chair, actually. Yes, Mark, if you if you want that, it's available at any time. Very nice in a suit, dear. Very nice. Very nice in a suit, I must say. He says, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. That's the one. Heidi says it as well. Prepare to fail and fail to... No. Uh, fail to prepare then you prepare to fail. So we are prepared tonight to fail dismally. But that's OK, because I can fall back on music at any point. <laughs> I can fall, fall back on the music at any point, which is easy. Right, here's the phone number. If you'd like to call in, you can give us a ring on 020 8144 OK? 020 8144 If you're listening on TikTok, you won't get any phone numbers anymore because we worked out with the kind help of some of our TikTok people, how to stop that happening. There's also a text number. If you want to text in, it's 07451 287 337. 07451 287 337. All right, so don't be shy. We'd like to hear from you this evening. Uh, Lisa B's there, who says, Hi, Chris, hope you had a lovely birthday from Lisa. Indeed, I did. Um, I've had a marvellous uh, few days, to be honest. <clears throat> the uh, karaoke on Saturday night was great. Which, um, you know, if I have a good karaoke night, that's like having a, a, you know, a private party or something like that, you know. So that went really well. And um, on Sunday night, we went to see the ABBA concert. It's the second time I've been in uh, Pudding Mill Lane, which is not too far from Stratford in East London. And once again, a fantastic show. Uh, my sister and my brother-in-law came all the way down from Lincolnshire um, to join us for the show. She too, uh, they too have been there once already. And also came Vera, who's with us tonight. Vera from Vera's Choice in the Morning. Dan C., who you have heard on, on Reach On Air before, uh, and his other half, Ben, they came down. Um, Dave, who not many people know. I think I was the only one who knew him, actually. Dave was there as well. And uh, my mate Ronnie came as well. And we had a fantastic night. Fantastic night. Uh, we came by train. You see, I quite like travelling by train. I do. I like the fact... I, I know you're going to like, hang around sometimes, but generally they seem to... Whenever I've gone on a train, 
right? It's always run to time. You know, I've never had a problem with a train being like hours. I've had it with planes. Oh, uh, you know, you can't, can you? Don't, don't even go there. Waiting at a blooming airport. Isn't that the worst thing ever? The worst um, occasion of that was when I was a Boy Scout. I'll never forget, 1979. And we were, uh, it was okay going there. Coming back, we got stuck in New York. I think JFK Air, somewhere between 8 and 12 hours, right? It was something like that. And we sat on this blooming floor, literally playing games. I think we had some sort of board games going on or something like that. And a funny thing is that it, at this very moment, it doesn't feel too bad, to be honest. Um, but I, I, I do remember being really fed up. I think going to sleep, you know, putting your racks up at one end and your head on there, on the floor in the airport. And it's awful. I've never had that experience. Actually, have you had any experience of uh, waiting a long time for a plane at all? Has it happened to you? Have you been stuck in an airport for ages? And once when I went to Australia, um, I think the flight was at 9.30. This is Heathrow Airport. 9.30 flight. And um, 9.30 became 10 o'clock. 10.30, 11, 11.30. And at 11 o'clock, we're getting worried because I think the planes are not allowed to take off after midnight. And it got to 11.30. And I think it was about a quarter to 12 20 to 12, something like that. We all piled, we got, got us all to pile on this plane. Right, I was in the posh seats. I'd saved up my money. If you're going to go on a long flight than that, I highly advise you to save up the money. Don't say you can't save it. You just cut back on something else like your blooming cigarettes or your computer games, you know, or buying subscriptions and all this business. Is it? I have this conversation with so many people. Yeah, you know, there was one bloke on the... Um, TikTok this morning while we were just talking about where I was staying at the Claridge's Hotel last night. And he says, you've got more money than since. No, that's where I choose to spend my money. You you well know, as some of you smoke, how much that costs you a week. £70 minimum? 20 a day, is it? What's that, about 70 80 quid a day times four? So that's £320 a month. Uh, you know, it's getting on there. Or if you're a football fan, if you go to football matches, costs you an arm and a leg, doesn't it? I know my 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 younger nephew, uh, Jimmy. I don't think he does it now so much, but he would spend hundreds on a weekend going to the football. Well, that's my thing, you know. So it's it's where you want to spend your money, isn't it? Anyway, going back to this airport thing, have you ever had to wait ages and ages at an airport for a plane? And this particular Australia one, we got on this plane and it, it literally took off at like two minutes to midnight. And I think we just made it before you're not allowed to fly from Heathrow. That's how I understood. D don't don't quote me on that because I might be completely wrong with that. But uh, it, it's just awful. Hanging around for a blooming plane. Um, DJ Sparky says I was in Dubai, was stuck there for 11 hours. Oh, my word. Weather problems, so free hotel and food. Yeah, you're supposed to um, get that, aren't you? After a certain amount of time. Although I gather uh, Ryanair and uh, one of those other planes like that don't like to pay it out. They do their best to not pay it. Hello to uh, Pally Lily, who says, nice hair. I haven't got any, mate. <laughs> it's gone. It used to be there. It's got less and less and less, but there we are. There you go. Look, Duke Silver. That was him from this morning. Duke Silver, who says, Chris had to remortgage his house for the hotel last night. Well, I don't think it's uh, that bad, to be honest. You know, <laughs> it wasn't as bad as that. But yeah, you know, it, it weren't too bad. We've got Roy Brownlow calling in. Good evening, Roy. How are you? I'm not too bad, Chris. Happy birthday. Thanks you very then? much, Roy. Are you 60 yet, Roy? Are you coming up to it or whereabouts are you I'm with that? Si I'm 62 this year. You're 62? OK. It's not so bad, is it, Roy? Well, I, Chris, to be honest, mate, I don't feel... A few, obviously, you get a few more aches and pains, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, I don't feel that much different no. from 40, probably 50. I mean, I, to be honest, Chris, I mean, I was I was training boxing seven days a week at 50, 55, so... Right, right, uh, right. Uh, yeah, I mean... You, 
he, he get a bit out of breath. Seems, seems a little bit quick. He's, I seem to sweat a bit more when I walk. Okay. Uh, but, but, but mentally, I don't feel no different. No, that's 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 where I'm coming from as well. I mean, I was approaching the sixty. I remember approaching forty and thought, thinking how terrible that was. Mm, mm, and mm. I remember approaching fifty and thinking, oh my god, that's awful. But that hasn't happened this time, and I don't know why. I didn't I approach think when you approach. 40, you think well, life's ending, life's over. Hey, you really... And when you get 60, you sort of get into the way of thinking, oh, well, yeah, life is going to an end, but it's quality of life now. Life is coming to an end? Well, it might be for you, mate. I intend to be <laughs> here for another 50 oh. years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the on, one sweating minutes. and running out of breath. I'm OK. I can sit here and talk and sing for two hours. No problem. Would you want to, would you want to be here, Chris? Uh, uh, Chris, to be honest, I don't want to be here at 80, 90, thinking, is this today the last one? Really? Well, you've got to think that at that age, haven't you, surely? Because you know you're not going to have another 20 no. years. No, you no, do, you don't know that. This is this is a different age. It's not like, you know, the 1950s. I mean, do you smoke? Mm -hmm. No, uh, I, I smoked to uh, about 21. Right, drink, OK. Uh, drank, drank or smoked since 21. Right, OK. OK. Or alcohol or alcohol and, and drugs were never my thing. I've never done that, really. Right. Smoked a bit of dope in younger days. Right. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I've always left a quite a, quite an healthy life, Chris, really. I've always kept myself fit, trained mm. and stuff like that. What do, um, you, what do you do now to... Do you do anything now to keep oh, fit? Yeah, I go out walking. I still go out on the punch bag. You know, occasionally I get on the punch bag on the backyard. Yeah. I go out walking with dog. Not as, not as, I'd like to be able to walk like 10, 15, 20 miles like I used to, but now probably 5, 10. Right, OK. But that, that there you go. You see, so you're still moving. You're still moving. Yeah. Well, I, would, I wouldn't write yourself off so quickly, Roy, no, to be no. honest. Chris, Chris, I think, Chris, if you keep your mind active, yes. your, body will, your body will stay the same. Absolutely. And this, this is part of doing this thing, to be honest. Because for the, let me mm. tell you, from the moment, well, from about up past eight, I'm buzzing. Right the way Definitely. through, I've got to keep the sound coming in some way or another. There's all sorts of things going on in front of me, as you can just imagine. And it's like yeah, when yeah, you're... I've worked, I've worked in radio, so yeah. It must be yeah. like that when you're doing your magic, though. You're, you're constantly yeah, yeah, looking... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, your mind's going... Well, I'd imagine my mind's going at 70,000 miles an hour. I think, Chris, you know, a lot of people fail. I mean, I've got mental illness, Chris. I've had it all my life. Which one, um, which one have you got? People, I've... I've I've got a form of schizophrenia. I have irrational thoughts. Okay. I'm in control now. I'm on medication. I'm fine. I, right. I'm in control of everything. Uh, but I think a lot of people with mental illness, especially, and with illness, they get ill and they give up. Mm. Yeah. They give up. They, they resign the fact to the sense of the fact that's the way it's going to be. I'm going to die. I'm going to be ill. Blah, 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 blah. You know, mm. we're suffering this mental illness. Whereas uh, with my mental illness, I mean, it's, my story is I got mental I done it as a kid, didn't know what it was. As I got older, it seemed strange. And then I, I studied mental illness, so I understood it. Right, And now right. I understand it, I can, I can cope with it and, mm, and mm. deal with it and beat it to a certain extent. I, you know, I, I know certain things will make me anxious and paranoid and stuff like that, so I know how to, I know how to avoid or deal with. Do you want... I, that, that... I wonder if you'd, you'd, you'd want to share with us the things that make you anxious or you don't have to? It's up to you. No, no, no Chris, I'm not ashamed of it. I, I say it's, it's a form of schizophrenia. I have irrational... Chris, I could walk down the street. I could see you, say, 9 o'clock at night. I could see you walking the other way uh, when, when I was ill, not so much now. Yeah. And I, I could think for three or four days that I'd murdered you. And I'd be going checking for the body. That's how I used right. to be. Right, OK, I, I, OK. I was out of control with my thoughts. My thoughts would take control. But now... I learned to rationalise it and, and, and take that control back. Yeah. And, and that, that, that's how my mental illness was, you mm. know. And uh, you, well, you, you know, you've known me for a while, Chris. Somebody could upset me, Chris, and I can, I can dwell on it for, for days and days and days and mm. days. Yeah. You know, and yeah. right, I'm, you know, and I'm out of this. So I have to take control of that and say, well, you know, rationalise this, they didn't mean it, blah, blah. And that's how I have to be. You've got to be, you're either in control or you're out of control. Without naming those people, are they specific? Is it the same people or could it be anyone? That, well, could um... be anyway. Chris, I'll give you another example, Chris. If I, uh, say me and you, was at, I don't know, it's getting necessary. You said to me, give a chip, Roy. You took a bag of chip out of my bag of chips. I couldn't eat the chips. Okay. I have, I have, okay. I have, I would have a panic attack um, 
my brother the other day said, "Be are you want some of these chocolate? Yeah, I've bit of chocolate. I couldn't eat it. I can't mm. because a panic attack is worse than the um, embarrassment of not taking the chocolate." Right, I understand. Okay, okay. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, so I must. It's still a thing. I must admit, Roy, I get very upset when someone says, "Can I have one of your chips?" In fact, <laughs> yeah, the last time that good, the last the last <laughs> the last time that happened, I rang up Mr. Putin in Russia, and he sent over yeah. one of his ultrasonic missiles, and that person no longer exists. Chris, Chris, <laughs> Chris, that's not mental illness. That's greediness. <laughs> oh, I can't bear it! I can't bear it. <laughs> Would you like some chips? No, it's okay. I'll have a couple of yours. No, you won't. I will buy you oh, some no. chips. But they won't have it. Yeah. They won't let yeah. you buy them the chips. They must have one of yours. I think what is, Chris, it's, it's so... Oh, I don't want to be embarrassed by him buying me chips. I'll sort of meet him halfway and be half yeah. embarrassed by taking him on his. <laughs> 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 that, 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 that's what it is. So, uh, so yeah, so, yeah, that thing's not too bad. You know, I keep... Following old Daniel Woodass. Yeah, yeah. He does his thing, yeah. yeah. He does his thing. Yeah. He I, does I, his do you thing. know what, Chris? I mean, he, he, he blocked me for a while. I don't know why. But anyway, but we're friends again now. And I think he's a great character. I think he's a great character. I admire that guy. I admire that he carries he on. He carries on. Think about him. He's tried to do a couple of shows on Reach on Air. And actually, myself, myself and uh, my very good friend, uh, Ross Pat Zelt. Oh, do you know what? I haven't got the blooming... I'm so sorry. I haven't got the Ross... The, 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 the reach on ish thing. There it is. Oh, no, I, yeah, he's there. He's there. Okay, Ross, I'm so sorry. Those of you sending a message on the reach on air message system, I didn't have that come up in front of me. There's all these messages now. I'm, I'll get to those in a second. Uh, but my friend Ross Patzel, me and him reckon Dan can do a good radio show. And when you hear him talk, I think it's all right. But he's got a, a bit of an equipment problem there, and that is trying to do the whole show on a laptop and absolutely nothing else. Uh, yeah, whereas yeah. I think the minimum thing you've got to have is a laptop, a cheap mixer. You can get a mixer, yeah. a reasonable uh, price. And you see, basically, the sound's got to come out of the mixer, uh, so out of the computer, into the mixer, and the microphone into the mixer, and the output from the mixer back into the computer. But it does yeah, spe so involve spending a little bit of money. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know anyone else that does a whole show on a laptop. Now, I was doing my little radio show this morning up at the uh, hotel, and that uh, worked okay. I, I think for some reason the microphone was cutting out at some point, but I do believe that's because we were sending too much sound into it. I'm not quite sure if they, those people were listening on TikTok, because sometimes the TikTok sound doesn't work too well if you're sending too much into it. And the problem with that is that on TikTok, there's no little meter telling you how much sound is going in, right? Okay. So on YouTube... And on Reach On Air, I have two separate programmes in front of me with little green lights flashing up. And now and again, they go into the yellow and very occasionally they pop into the red. And that's OK. Mm. But if they're mm. banging over fully into the red, the sound will cut out. It's as simple no, as yeah. that. You're, you're, over, you're over modding, you're over right. speaking. I mean, I, I, I do, uh, when I used to do radio shows through, through the internet and that, and, that, and occasionally I still just go a bit... I use a program you might know. I use Virtual DJ, which lets you mix. It oh all. yes, yeah, very popular, yeah. very popular. Yes, uh, yes. And, you, and, and that and that will output too. But even then, I still when it is radio, you start to put that to a mixer just so you got that extra bit of control. Yes, yeah. I used to love. I used to. Do you remember the old VU meters, the needles that used to bounce yeah, up yeah, and down? Yeah. I used to. I used to just love looking at those. When I, when I, this is all very sad, really. When I was at school, there was some music playing. I'd do that with my fingers going up and down mm. for some strange, obscure reason. <laughs> you got you, you got to remember. I mean, I've worked in FM, professional radio stations. They have compressors, so you can never you can never peak that much. That's right. The press, yes, yes. compressor will kick well, in. I, I have one. Your volume down. I've got one here. I had two here at one point, um, and I had one here, and I could never set the damn thing up. It, there, there's no, there doesn't seem to be a rule about actually setting these things up. And I took them, I took one down to the karaoke and I, I used it at the karaoke for ages, but I could never get the damn thing working properly. So that when people, and, and you know, we're, we're, they're, they're karaoke singers, you know, they're not professional singers. We all know that. We all know that. But there's just some people, one minute they're, 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 they're like really quiet in the microphone like that. 
Uh, and then yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what, what what could they be singing. Um, at first, I was afraid. I was petrified. Then, oh, Chris, I can't hear myself. I can't I thinking I could. And then suddenly, they scream out <laughs> a loud note, uh, and unaware to themselves, and it's painful. It's painful. Yeah. So this compressor, the idea was if they get really loud, it would stop it going so loud. But I could never set the damn thing up. I found it incredibly complicated. Incredibly yeah, complicated. To a compressor, it has to have so many seconds of, of an eye level to, to compress and, and mm. to, to set itself. I, I must admit, though, because I mean, I watch your karaoke, Chris, on YouTube, and, it's like, uh, and uh, yeah, I don't expect top singers, you know, uh, but I'm watching for the characters. I like the characters. Me too. Me too. I like yeah, characters. I like the, uh, yeah. And that's of... Yeah, I like... I like oh, I forgot his name. Yeah. You insult all the time. Like oh, yeah. Name. It's... Oh, oh, that's Toby. That's Toby. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I like Toby. I like, I like the way that Toby reacts to you. Uh, I like that new guy now that always wears loads of beads around his neck. Oh, that's... Uh, that's George. George. Yeah, yeah, he's George. a character. I, I like it. I miss some of the old characters. Don't seem to get the old characters in there. We're Roy and that. I've not seen them for a while. And people uh, like yes, that. there's a reason for that. He he comes from Beaconsfield, and um, if there's oh, no okay. trains, he's he can't do it. That's why. That's why you don't yeah, see Roy. Right. If there's no trains, he he just can't do it. I'm afraid, and that's how it oh, is. Know. You know. Okay. That's it. But yeah, I like I like the I like I watch them. You know, I listen to the music and some of them are quite really good singers. But I like the characters. Yeah, sound wise, um, I try and keep an eye on that so it doesn't bang into the red. Uh, if it's if it's going to distort, it usually happens when I'm singing because obviously I can't work the controls and sing at the same time, and I don't know my own level while I'm there. You can kind of guess it, and sometimes it just goes goes out a bit. But, but that's you, just how you it know is. mic technique, don't you, Chris? You, I watch you, you know mic technique. You know if you're going to be allowed to back off the mic a bit. Yeah, you yeah, know I, t I take it away a bit. A lot of people, they're right on top of this thing, and the, 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 they don't realise, you know, they can sing a line uh, and on various different notes, and they'll have a note that they hit, and it really comes out loud. <laughs> And, it's, it and when you're sitting in there, that you don't realise. Because the other thing is, of course, in the pub in Central Station, where I do the karaoke on Friday and Saturday, um, the speakers are on the stage, but they're pointing towards the audience. So actually, when you're on the stage, you can't hear it as well or as anywhere near as loud as it is at the people sitting down. Yeah, now, you, you ideally, need a monitor. You need ideally, a monitor, wouldn't you? well, ideally, you'd have a monitor, and I used to bring one in. Right. And I would put it on the floor, pointing upwards at the thing, which was OK, except now and again, you'd get someone with a microphone and in between lines, they drop the microphone down by their side. Well, of course, you know what happened. Ooh, yeah, oh, yeah, and again, feel, yeah. that's painful when it happens. It does happen occasionally. Uh, but there you go. Yeah, it's all it's all keeping an eye on it. Um uh, Roy, but you know, one of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think you do well, Chris. I think you know, I think your karaoke does well. I mean, how long have you been doing it there now, Chris? Oh, um, I don't know. I could look on my accounts and tell you, I suppose. <laughs> do you want me roughly. to look it up? Oh, roughly. Uh, um, I would say six years. Chris, that's good. I think it's oh, good. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I've hang been on a, a DJ, Chris. You to be right, in a venue for Here two years is good. I'll tell you what, well, I'm on 2014, I was there. Hang on a minute, let's so, go back another year. Um, eight, I, eight, I, I had a couple of gigs, 18 years each. Eight, Two gigs, I was there for 18 years. Right, it looks like it was 2014. So, sorry, sorry uh, yeah. nine years. That, Chris, that's good, you know, Chris, in this game, Chris, I DJ. Nine oh, years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this game, Chris, to be in a venue for two years is you've done well. My for a venue God. to keep you for two years, you must be something, de you know, good. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I did a nightclub up here. There's a nightclub up here, and I've worked there three times, three right. three separate occasions for for three, you know, for two, three, four years at a time. They've right. called me back. Different owners, obviously, different owners. Yeah, so, and, yeah. and I think that's good to you know to for a club to keep you because. You know, they won't say think you're going to stay or they get rid of you. Yes, yes. Well, I can't believe I've been there since 2014. That has shocked me. That's really shocked me, that. Since and you were 21. And it's surprising. Our, 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 I'm just trying to find when I started there. It's certainly... 
Um, now that you mentioned it, okay, so it wasn't. It was that's when I started, two thousand and fourteen. I'll be able to, I'm, I'm yeah. going for my accounts here, you see. So when did I start paying tax on that? That's um, year. That's <laughs> year. <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? No, you don't want to fall into trouble with them people. Uh, I've yeah. heard some horror stories when they people I, end up I, with bills. Right, like, I, I got caught once, Chris. I got caught once, Chris. And it, it was a thousand pound investigation fee. You had to pay a thousand pound for no, just. No. For... Well, they, they, I, I thought they sent me a tax bill. They sent me this thing. I'd been doing a bit of all the cams and I did a, this club. Right. Anyway, they caught me at this club and they sent me this thing. And the investigation fee for them to investigate me right. was a thousand pounds. The bill was four and a half, nearly five thousand uh, pounds. I got my uncle on. It was an accountant. Bless him, he's gone now. But he was an accountant, and I ended up paying eight hundred pounds in the end. Mm, gosh. Uh, but yeah, gosh. but it was about nearly five thousand pounds. They charged me a thousand pounds to investigate me. They charged me seven hundred and fifty pounds interest on the investigation fee. Right. And the, and the fine. Oh. Yeah. And and I only did... actually owed, in the end, I only actually owed nearly nine hundred pound. Oh, okay. So the, the it was dearer the 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 charge for investigating you was dearer than the fine. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> doing what I was, in the end, he proved blah blah blah. And, yeah. You know, I've I've heard know, some it, 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 I've heard some horror stories of people getting bills for like I don't know thirty, forty, fifty thousand pounds. Oh, you yeah, know, sort yeah, of, yeah. gosh, money like that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I know I knew a DJ, he kept two sets of books and he sent the wrong set of books in once and, oh, mate, the, he, he lost his house. Poor. It's just not worth it, is it? Especially, I think, yeah. later on in life. I mean, I suppose if you're young, you might want to take the risk, but then you, you won't own anything, will you? Whereas, you know, you get some of these stars who are in their, I don't know, 60s and 70s, and they get caught, and they must lose yeah, yeah. so much stuff. Yeah. It's just not yeah. worth it. All right, sure. Roy. Well, thanks very much for calling in on the show today, yeah, sir. I'm going, to Black, I'm going to Blackpool a, a week or Saturday, so I'll bring you a stick of rock back. I'm, only, I'm going for a weekend for a magic convention, but I'll bring you a stick of rock back, Chris. Are you doing any work up there at all or just going for the no, convention? He, he, um, as you know now, I'm in the magic circle. I passed yes. the exam, I'm in the magic circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and every year, it, well, obviously not COVID, there wasn't. Uh, every year at the Winter Gardens, there was a, what we call, there's about 4,000, 5,000 magicians come from all over the world. So there's Lovely. big magic convention, lectures, dealers, halls, and, and all that sort of stuff. So Lovely, I'm, I'm yeah. selling some stuff down there. I've got some uh, makeup bags that I'm going to be selling to magicians. Oh, are you, wearing, are, you wearing, are you wearing makeup? Is that to start you trying to look younger or what? Well, you should just Chris, go and have the Chris, full facelift. Chris, it's, it's a competition against, is it Mark, you know, your friend Mark? I'm, I'm competing against him all the time. I'm, I'm you, really sorry, but you can't. There's no compete competing against my Mark, darling. Don't you worry about that. Ooh. And I saw him in a different light today. He had a lovely little suit on, very little tight-fitting suit. He had, he had all his hair done and everything for me. <laughs> anyway, Ooh. thanks, Roy. <laughs> all right, mate. Cheerio. Bye-bye it's now. Nice, it's been nice to meet up. It's been a pleasure for you. <laughs> Ta-da. There we are, Roy Brownlow. Um, just in case you're thinking of calling in, I'm just going to have to hold the calls for a moment, my darlings. I'm actually, Roy was the only one who was seen to be calling in, so even if you call in now, uh, uh, not for the moment, my darlings, because, and I'll tell you what, I've got a, a whole heap of um, messages here at the moment. So I'm just going to close that line for a moment. Okay, I don't like doing that, really. Uh, but let's just read these. Uh, Ross is indeed with us today. Good evening, Ross. He, he did a show, actually, on um, Sunday night, I think. And here's like a chat and music show, except there was no music. And he, he managed. You see, I think you should just do a chat show, Ross, you know. Maybe have the music to fall back on. I've I've got like eight songs lined up here, you know. And we've done 35 minutes now, not a single song played yet. But then again, you see, the trouble is if I play a song, I can't get to the messages sometimes or the phone calls. So it's it kind of, you know, that's how it is. But uh, anyway, Ross is there. As you know, I stayed at the nice hotel in London, Claridge's. Ross says, did you manage to unscrew and smuggle out the shower you liked from the hotel today and sneak it out to install in your own house? Good God, are you for real? No, I didn't. I don't do things like that, dear. No way. Besides, I just had my shower replaced at the beginning of the year. Um, sorry, a couple of months ago, wasn't it? I got a lovely new power shower in that um, in the uh, in the in the in the, sh in, the sh in the bathroom. It's really nice. 
I'm hoping that Mark Bowles might want to come around and use it at some point, you know. But there we are. Uh, Ross is tuned in with a glass of wine in his orangery on the west wing of his estate. Please, dear. <laughs> and on the subject of airports, he says, that's why I like holidays in this country. The thought of sitting in airports, hoping you don't get delayed. This country, uh, jump in the cart and go. Lots of gorgeous places to visit in this country. And he's absolutely right. And if you do want to go posh, that's what I've just done. You know? You don't even have to drive there, actually. There's a there's a tube station right round the corner from Claridge's. I mean, although everyone pulls up and there's some lovely cars pull out. Some lovely cars, I must say. Um, Ross also says, I love it that you waited all this time to go to Claridge's to treat yourself. Um, all that matters is that you had an amazing experience and another thing ticked off your list you have done. Well, I haven't got a list, really. I, I haven't got, like, a bucket list or anything like that. Um... But it is a it is an expensive thing to do, you know. But if that's your thing, so be it. You know, we don't work for sixty years of our lives and not not want to spend a bit of money occasionally, does it? You know, uh, you're not listening, are you, Dan? You're not listening at all. I just you don't listen, do you? I just said I've just turned off the phone line for a few moments while I do these messages because people have sent these messages in. Does anyone listen to the whole show, or is it just a little bits and pieces, dear? God's sake, man. Duke says, shower replaced and trip to Claridge's. How the other half live? <laughs> I just don't care anymore, Duke. I don't care anymore. Anyway, uh, Ross says, my mum and dad went on a two-week cruise across the world a week after they retired, as their presence of themselves are finally retiring. They had it booked for two years, so had that to look forward to. Uh, me and Donna have, always, have already said when both girls have moved out, we will treat ourselves to a long holiday to America to do all the things we want to do with no kids to worry about. You'll be lucky, Ross. You'll be straight out that door, I think, mate, to be honest. When those girls go, that'll be it. She won't want you anymore. You'll be begging me to let my room out to you, probably, which won't be a problem because we're both into the same sort of things, you know? <laughs> this, this this house would just be constantly sending out radio stuff, wouldn't it? And video stuff. <laughs> we could do shows at the same time. I've got a fast connection here. I've got 20 meg up. We only need 10 each. 10 meg, you, you could do be showing on one station. I'll be doing a show on another. All at the same. 24-hour broadcasting from me and Ross Patel. How's that sound? In fact, Dan Woodhouse can come round us also if you want to, Dan, and do a couple of shows from here. What do you reckon, eh? And uh, on the subject of retiring, Ross says his granddad started to go to Indoor Bowls Club. He uh, got an allotment, bought a caravan to keep themselves fit, active, things to do during the week and weekend, and not sit around doing nothing, getting bored. Keep active and you will live long, I think. I totally and utterly agree with that. And uh, like Roy was just saying a moment ago, it's not just about the, the active side of things, as in walking, running, gym swimming it's not just that you've got to keep your head going as well you've got to have something to keep your head buzzing around this is really um mind busyness doing this sort of thing doing this is really mind business even in the morning you know to you at that end all you do all, all you hear is the music the jingles and me talking Right. In my head constantly is what am I going to do next? What am I going to say next? Will that song fit in with the general thing? Where am I going to play this jingle? And then towards the end, it gets even more complicated because you're trying to time it so that it finishes bang on. Now, you can do this with a computer. You can load all this stuff in and it tells you when to talk and when to shut up. And it's just, But I find that incredibly boring. I like to do it on the fly. And that means your mind's more active. Ross, I tell you. Counting up and down times all the time. Evening to Clive W. Evening. There's our lovely DJ Di in the Grampian area. Evening, Di, who says, Evening, Chris. So glad this morning went well from the hotel room. Sorry I missed your show, but here now. Yeah, try it later if you want, Di. You know, it's on the old uh, Reach On Air uh, replay player, as you know. I think it did work go well. I need to listen back to it myself because uh, someone said it was cutting out, but I have a feeling it was cutting out to TikTok and not to the um, smart speakers there. And DJ Die says, I used to love sharing chips. Oh, no, Die. No, 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 dear. No sharing my chips. Thank you. 
<laughs> she says, I used to love sharing chips in my single days. Guaranteed walking home after clubbing with chips in your hand. Great chat up and always a really nice looking guy asking if he could have a chip. Well, actually, uh, when I was in the Scouts, there was another Scout I fancied, right? Um, uh, and uh, I would give him chips. I'm not going to say who it was because he's married now. But I would give him chips <laughs> in the hope that he might like me. That's 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 the age, sort of, I don't know, 16, 15 or 16, I think I was at that age. And that's the age where you kind of, you know, you, you want to form a relationship rather than just hook up for, for 10 minutes or something, whatever, you know what I mean? And you kind of, you, you get an infatuation with someone. You know how it is, don't you? You with your boys and what have you. All right, um... Just scrolling uh, down there. We'll do a few more of these messages, um, Dan, and I'll open the phone number for you. There was one from uh, DJ Sparky. Where is it now? There we are. Uh, uh, Vera says, I don't like putting their people putting their dirty hands in my chips. They will lose their fingers. Yeah, don't muck around with Vera. I'm telling you now, don't muck around with Vera. I was very concerned about the people in front of us at the ABBA concert when their heads got in the way. I thought she was just going to rip one off, one of the heads off, and just kick it, kick it onto the stage. <laughs> DJ Sparky has anxiety and depression. Uh, music is my medicine. Oh, absolutely. Duke, have you ever suffered with mental health, Chris? Uh, yes, I get bad depression, uh, and I try to keep busy, and keeping busy is a great thing to stop depression. Because it stops you thinking about it. I just keep busy all the time. I've had some uh, really nasty depression before. I always remember uh, years ago I would be DJing at this place in Camden, Town of Black Cat. And it'd be a packed night and there'd be all these people in there, you know, dancing and what have you. And then the night would finish and the lights go out, you see. And then you leave the stage and I get into my car and on the way home I'd be crying my eyes out. Crying my eyes out and never knew why. Never really know why. So, yes... Um, but actually, uh, since before Christmas, since before Christmas, I've been pretty good, actually. I think it's something to do with the job we're in as well. You hear a lot of, um, entertainers. I, I think it's when the lights go out, when the lights go out, there's nothing. There's nothing when those lights go out. Hello to John Springgate. Evening, John. Evening, John. Happy birthday. Um, thank you very much, John. John is 74, aren't you, John? <laughs> John was in the, uh... Uh, he, he goes out and does cabaret and he's in the Glitter Band, actually, John. He's on the TikTok at the moment, so do say hello to him. He's a famous person, OK? And um, I remember you, John, saying to me years and years ago, you couldn't believe you've just got your first winter fuel payment. I remember you saying that to me. Do you remember telling me that? <laughs> do you remember that? Because I remember that. Uh, people are sending me little gifts today on TikTok. Thank you very much. We got the little heart finger and some daisies. What else are people sending this evening? Um, hello to uh, Martin uh, Pincott, the leg, who watches uh, my brother-in-law on YouTube. So hello to you, Martin. Welcome along there. Okay, welcome along. Um, uh, thank you very much to Merlin. My very good friend Merlin, hello, who says, happy Christmas, uh, sorry, happy birthday, Chris, get it right, happy birthday, Chris, travel and hotels are the only two things I don't go budget. I'd happily pay eight to £10,000 on flights for long haul, nine plus hours and hotels over. Thank you very much, Merlin. Yeah, I mean, um, Ronnie... Uh, my mate wants to go to... I, I, I said to him for Christmas I'd take him because he wanted to go to Paris. So we're kind of looking at it. But that hasn't happened yet. Um, and he said to me the other day, would, would I mind if he combined his birthday and Christmas, so a better holiday? And I said, yeah, that's fine. So I think we're going to do one or two nights in Paris. And there is a hotel that was mentioned, but I... I I mean, blimey, I mean, it's it's really expensive, more than Claridge's, actually, uh, in Paris. You may know it, Merlin, Le Maurice, M-E-U-R-I-C-E. -E. And I'm thinking that one might well be a little bit too over the top, to be honest. That's that's really expensive, that one. 
But there was another one that uh, someone mentioned. Actually, we, we were in the spa in Claridge's, uh, in, in, um, in the fifth floor basement um, this morning. And we got talking to this ever such a nice girl. She was really nice. She lives in Canada Water. And um, she mentioned a hotel called, I don't know if you know either of these, um, the Hoxton, H-O-X-T-O-N, the Hoxton Hotel in Paris, which doesn't seem uh, too bad priced at all, to be honest, that one. So we're, we'll go at some point, either one night or two nights. And he, I think he wants to go on the, well, mind you, I don't know if he will want to go on the Eurostar now, because he just hated going on 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 the train to uh, to the Amber concert. I loved it, you see, I loved it. Get a train from here to Waterloo. Waterloo line, Jubilee line to um, Canary Wharf. And then Canary Wharf to Pudding Mill Lane on the Docklands Light Railway, i.e. a public roller coaster, because that's basically what that is. That Anyone been on there, the Docklands Light Railway? It's like a roller coaster. It seriously is like a roller coaster. Unbelievable. It's good. It's good. It's not bad. It makes a bit of a racket. And if you sit in the front, because there's no driver... You sit in the front, and this thing goes along just like being on a roller coaster. It really is. Anyway, my darlings, I'm trying to keep up with your um, messages here. Thank you, uh, Merlin. He says, Le Morris is the place to stay in Paris. You pay a lot, but you get so much. An alternative boutique experience is Hotel Boulet in the Bastille district from Merlin. Um You obviously know about this, Merlin. We want to go and see the Eiffel Tower and Le Louvre and things like that. So what would be the sort of best place? And you could include that one if you wanted to. Yeah, I can't see us staying there somehow. You know, uh, although sometimes, you know, if you book last minute, you can get even on expensive hotels, you can get really good deals, can't you? Thank you, Merlin. But he wants to go to uh, Eiffel Tower, Le Louvre and places like that. Thank you, Sparky. Sending me now a fire pit, lightning bolts and a treasure box. Gosh, you're so generous today. Thank you very much, my darling. All right. So what do you reckon, Merlin? Where could we go? Um, I'm so sorry. I haven't, I haven't done the Facebook live messages yet, have I? Or the YouTube messages. Thanks so much to Eloise. Thank you, Eloise. Wishing me happy birthday today and your little roses and things. Thank you very much. It was uh, Sunday, actually. 60 years old now. I think I said hello to Gary Ross there, didn't I? Um, Liz Harris is there. Good evening to uh, Liz Harris. Gary Ross enjoyed the phone call there. Thank you very much. Hello to Drone Father. Wow, what's that? Is that like a little thing that flies all over the place? Mandy Davenport there. Janice Pope says, other people's chips taste nice. Oh, come on, they don't. They don't. <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah, it's like the crisp bowl at, at a wedding. You don't want to be eating any of those. God knows what people have been doing with their hands. And then they're shoving them, mixing all these crisps around. I had a bag of crisps before we started the show today. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> Hello to Weird City. He says, I'm joking. 60 isn't old. He reckons I'm in extra time. Thanks very much, mate. <laughs> Hello to Fran Green. Evening, Fran. Hello, Fran. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Danny Gibbs in the house. Save money on expensive custard creams. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Just say hello to little Heidi. Heidi's with us as well this evening. Heidi's with us as well tonight. So, greeting to uh, Heidi. All right. Welcome along to Heidi this evening. Uh, Darren Askew in the house. Evening, Darren. And do we say hello to DJ George Bond? And SCTV fan, Chris is there as well, right? And SOS Gregoria and Sean Crabtree. There we go. We've uh, we've mentioned everyone now at last, I think. And um, let's see, I think that might be a little Merlin message. No, but he just says Le Morris is the place to stay. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. OK, we'll open up uh, the phone line again. But uh, meanwhile, we're going to play you one tune now, boys and girls. All right. Buckle down, 
Uh, phone lines open again now if you want to call in. Uh, the number on your screens, 020 8144 is our local London number. Open now, 020 8144 uh, Duke Silver says Chris should record his shows and put them out as podcasts. Uh, well, they are available on... Um, uh, on the Reach On Air replay feature. If you go to reachonair.com, right... At the top there, you just go along to schedule, hover over that, and replay will drop down. Go to replay, and then select the date you want, and all the shows are on there. All right, my darlings. Uh, Dan's on the line. Good evening, Dan. Mm, finally got through. What do you mean you finally <laughs> got through? I mean, do you do you actually listen to anything I'm saying? I said I was closing the line, and it'll open again in a minute, and then you still sit there moaning because you don't listen to anything, do you? Yeah, it's because I have to come off TikTok to get into the actual phone part of the phone. Right. And then I have to call you, find that it's not there, go back on TikTok, then come back and go in. So I'm going to miss bits of the show. You must have more than one device, though. You've got all sorts of gadgets. No. I've, um, the, the computer's, well, I can say it on here, obviously. The computer's back at the flat. Right. So... so we're trying to just go on just one device here at the moment. Well, how many properties do you have yeah. then? Well, I, I only have, uh, you know, the great house of wood, as in my mum's, and um, and my Romford retreat. My Romford. Your Romford retreat. Do you know yeah. what? I've just looked at myself, Dan. I'm looking a bit rough now, to be honest. It's been a really full-on couple of days. I just want to read this out from uh, Rebecca in Manchester. Hello, Rebecca, darling. So you've had to wait so long for this. Uh, she was in Manchester for four days, then home. How was the hotel in London? Did you have scones and jam? First the cream. Happy 100th birthday, she says. <laughs> Happy 100th birthday, dear me. I will, of course, get to that, you know. I will, of course, get to that. Anyway, carry on, Dan. You go. Um, I'm just trying to find where you... Where is back on... I can't find the TikTok's gone now. What's that? Is it... Oh, no. Oh, no, that's Facebook. What? I can't... 
No, no, I just wanted to see, see actually how, how rough you was looking. I didn't realise. Wait, I was just trying to compare. Oh, I'm you looking to a bit rough today. Yeah. I can tell. Yeah, I, 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 I don't yeah. mind admitting. Well, I look rough like most of the time, to be honest. Now, you yeah. know, I'll try and. Yeah. I do. Yeah. You, you, you probably know that I do do myself up a little bit for the YouTube show on Wednesday nights. But as this is a radio show, I don't matter so much, and the camera's kind of, kind of on as well as. But mainly, it's a radio yeah. show, which uh, yeah. I prefer to be honest. I prefer doing the radio yeah. show. Yeah. 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 And listen, talking of reach. Yeah. You. It's about time. I've been trying to ask this question for months now. Right. Why? Any chance of having the question? Well, in Reach On Air's um, advertising thing, that, 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 you know, they have to be sponsored by advertising. Why is it that just it's normally just before your show, might be anyone else's show, I don't know, they've always got to have this advert for a timeshare company, for people trying to, I suppose, like reclaim money off a timeshare or something. Now, right. I, I, I'm a bit confused here. Like, knowing Reach On Air's listenership, I'm thinking, how many people, either listeners or presenters or both, have actually got timeshares? I just cannot see um, many people just really having a timeshare, many people knowing... I mean, I know vaguely what it is, but I'm not right up on it, but I just can't really see... Maybe actually having a timeshare. I mean, it's a bit of a big thing to have. You've got to have a thing, got to have a bit of money, and you to yes, one. Yes, yeah, the advert. Just... The advert comes from the news supplier. Um, they buy the news from a news supplier, and as part of the deal, the news supplier chooses and plays the ads. Ah, so they could be playing something totally inappropriate to the. Uh... Yes. Well, that's all good, isn't it? Yeah. It is, unless, of course, you want to pay for the news instead. <laughs> the money has pay to come from news. somewhere, Dan. I'd so, pay for it if it was good news. The, the, the money has to come from somewhere, and that yeah. the deal is that, that that's it. And, in fact, Ross says they get the news cheaper with the ad at the end, basically. These yeah, things all cost yeah. money. You must remember, Reach On Air makes no money. It's a big hobby type thing. It's a hobby for me. It's a hobby for Ross. It's a hobby for the people who own the station. No one makes any money. That's It's just yeah. our thing, and we are all heavily into it, and that's it, you know. Uh, there's not many in, internet radio stations that make money, if any. And if I think the ones that do probably have some sort of FM and or DAB service. I was going to say AM now, but not many people have got that. They have that, that service going on as well. You know, there just aren't that many people out there listening, I don't think, to internet radio. I have no idea how many people listen to this, um, but as long as I'm entertaining people, if there's a few messages coming in, then I, then I know it's happening, you know. Yeah, it's just, uh, I don't think people are, I mean, uh, do you know what? I actually know the old famous clip of you on BBC whatever it's called up in the north, north east. North. north, yes. Yeah. I, you know, I actually showed that clip to one of my flower store girls today. All right. And, uh, well, she sort of sm smiled at it, so that was very nice, you know. But, um, you, you know, I, was, I did say to her, you know, I think really you, me and Harry Beck have all got one thing in common. We're both revolutionists. Who's Harry Beck? Well, you know that tube map? That was him. That, that was, the, yeah, if you look closely at it, bottom left-hand corner, you'll see this map is uh, based on a design conceived by Harry Beck in 1933. Right, what's that um, got to do with us? Well, because when he invented it, he what um like the actual words of certain a certain person at London Transport was it's too revolutionary. No one will understand it and all that. And then it went through a few few years and then and it then it all of a sudden it became a success. So and that's in a way, that's a bit like I think like internet radio or with a how I do deal with the bingo tickets, you know. It's it's all a different way and it's so revolutionary. People just don't things you know, people just never seem to get it. 
when you want them to. And, and you, I imagine, you know, you, you must be going, going around going, oh, I wish I had more listeners, I wish I had more, you know, and, women's, but people, and I try try to help you along. I try to, you know, get people to say, look, never mind about your old, your old FM radio, you, you know, just, just use your phone, internet radio, and you know, reach, and you listen to Chris Reardon and Ross Paxel, and maybe me, if I'm doing the show. Did you ever think about getting some more stuff like a mixer and uh, a microphone? Well, I'm still a bit, I'm still a bit confused to what they are. I mean, you said it to Ross, um, Roy Brown. You say you say it so quick, I can't, I can't pick up on what um, on what what this stuff is. It's, it's called a mixer, yeah. Yeah. And and you, and you, so that's what's like all to the. You need a little a little plug in USB thing. Right, because you probably haven't got a line in on it. Um, you plug that into the USB thing, and then you plug the output from that to the input on the mixer, right? And then the output mm-hmm. from the mixer back into that. I'm a, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit concerned that you just won't be able to do it, technically. Yeah, is it? It's a shame. Like... It's a shame because when you're talking sometimes, it can be quite interesting, you know. Yeah, but is it just not, a sort of like you were saying? It goes into the output, and then that goes into the input. Is it sort of like a circuit? You know, what one's got a reciprocal back from the other, or well, the it's, the it's idea like, is the music comes out of your computer, then it goes into the mixer, which you can turn it up and down with that mixer, which sits on the desk in front of you, and the microphone goes into the mixer. And you, it, it brings the two signals together, and then the whole thing goes back in again, and they're now over the internet. It's quite simple. Yeah. I've heard you say before, I haven't got the equipment that uh, Chris Reardon or Ross Pat. Well, of course we've got a bit of a setup now because I do videos and everything else like that now. But the basic setup is what you got this morning while I was sitting in the hotel, and that yeah, I is saw that. that's 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 what it is. It's a little mixer. And a laptop and a microphone. That's about it. And I have to say, a very, very fast internet connection. I couldn't believe it. When I did the internet, I said, uh, uh, you know, as you go in there, have you got internet? Oh, yes, we've got very fast internet. And I went up and did the speed test. Well, my God, it was 200 meg down and 200 meg up. Now, here, where I am here, I've got 265 down or 275 down. But I've only got twenty up. But that's, I mean, that's plenty for sending up high definition signals. I'm sending out. I'm sending out two lots of video, um, and and a radio as well, you know. And it, it copes perfectly all right. But two hundred meg. Wow! In that hotel, it was fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. I showed that actually to Charlie on the flower store as well, and and I, I I couldn't see it coming. You know, obviously I'm walking down the streets and I can't see it. Yes, and Mark. Then I, and, and then we put the TikTok <laughs> on, and I said, "I just, I said, oh, I wonder how Chris Reardon's doing in clar- in cl- carriages." And and we had a, I thought, and I went, "Oh my God, he's brought the old bloody setup with him." Yeah. Oh, I, I thought, oh, blimey, how could? I, did, did you put it heavy? Did you have to carry all that? Like, well, mind you, in the car. Aren't it's you? not. Was it's not heavy. Car? It's not heavy. A laptop, a little mixer. It's only small. The mixer is about the size of I don't know really uh, what what have I got here with um it's about the size of two mini iPads they're not heavy not heavy at all yeah, Have you gone uh, I'm still here Oh I'm <laughs> Oh yeah um anyway what else has been been going on of um I do not. I'm getting tired of a bit tired of you, chum. I'm, I'm getting a bit struggling a bit, you know. With that you're str- what tonight? Now. You're struggling. Well, why didn't no, you call no, in I earlier? No, I mean in in. <laughs> excuse me. Every day. Yes. I try to find a new video to watch. A right. new video of something, something that I haven't seen, or something that have been was totally forgotten about from a previous era. Oh, right. What like oh, I'm oh, running. Old... I'm running out of stuff. Right. Right. Um. I. I. There's no new call my bluff. There's never been an episode of. Two Sorry. Can I? You. You just bluff. said something very important. Then. So I need to say. Could you just say that title again? Call my bluff. 
这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这。Carry on. Yeah. Oh, well, they changed it for the last series. Or the last. What the music? You're joking. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. Yeah. It was like da 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 Oh, oh! I'll week. have to look that up then. Is it available yeah, so it on the still, BBC I'll, I'll iPlayer? It, don't worry. Is it, it on the like, iPlayer? It essentially, like, people often say it's the same tune, only just a bit distorted beyond beyond belief. Beyond really. recognition. It, you know. Yeah, it was that yeah. era when the, the set turned even like blue and white, with right. a sort of like pointy triangle under behind Robert Robinson and. And then later on, they turned they turned it brown a bit.、Um, yeah. And I've got a couple of episodes from '89 until '88. Right. With that on it, and there's you get these lovely words like spigoty. Right. Smogger. Smogger. Yeah. <laughs> H- Hicks. Hicks corner. Right. Right. And、um, Populian. Okay. Which um which I remember is ointment. Ointment. Do you put a lot of、yeah. ointment on, dear? Where, where do you put your yeah. ointment? Yeah, well, if you have this graze or something, you know, on your arm or something, some ve- a- there are some really good ointments out there. You know, there's this one that you you buy and you can put it on stuff and it shrinks. That's really good. Yeah, I think I probably know a few people I'd like to shrink, but、uh, would you? Who are they then? Oh well, you know, I'm always.、Uh, No, knowing the abuse I used to suffer in a previous life, there's.、Um, Have you lived there's before then? What were you before? A cat, a squirrel? Well, b- b- I, mean, before, I think you'd be I... a squirrel. Ah,、oh, squirrels! Yeah, yeah. The, the, the trouble is, we love them, don't we? But they are vermin. Well,、uh, you don't want to get them into that. I had them in the loft once. That was an absolute nightmare. Absolute nightmare having、Ooh. them in the loft. Yeah, had to get rid of them by various different. Once you catch one by one method, you won't catch another one by that same method in the same area, because they know, they've just seen、oh, their little see. mate get stuck in a cage, you know,、mm. or a trap, you know. They've yeah, seen their、uh, little、um, mate, and they will avoid it like anything, no matter how many little nuts that you put in there. Do you have little nuts? Do you? Um, normally、uh, ready salted. Yeah, yeah. I've tried the salt and vinegar ones out of ASDA, but they're they're, they're、right? not they're not as good as KP. Mm, mm, and、yeah. talking about what I was in a previous life, I well, let's face it, the kids at school were,、uh, called me all the names under the sun and all that. Well,、oh, I think they, what did they call when you? When I look back at it, I think. What did they call、um, you, Dan? Because I got called names at school. Yeah, well, well, I'm I'm not I'm not allowed to swear on this show, am I? Oh, they use swear words. Now, I didn't use swear words to me. I was called、uh, Bucktooth and Goofy because my teeth stuck out, and then later on Bender. <laughs> But I, yeah, you see, I know, I, I,、yeah. I kind of think you see this is where I am with my with my the way my mind works. I don't see it as offence. I see it as humour. I just see everything as humour. I I I mean everything as humour. And people get very upset when I laugh at certain things. And I don't, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. They just I mean, don't get it. Yeah, I mean, from what <laughs> for, they call for, me for example,、school. for example, in the pub on Saturday night, we had a little、yeah. bit of an issue. It was so funny, and it, this has、yeah. never happened before. Never happened before, right?、Um, so usually, around about ten thirty, ten forty, I will unplug the laptops and put the power adapters away to save approximately fifteen seconds of time when I'm packing up. Okay, because the battery is like charged right up at that point. It's going to go. You think it's going to go for another hour? Well, for some reason. I unplug these two laptops at about about twenty five to eleven, and we were at the second to last singer. I'm just, and I think they were doing. Yeah, it was Sean actually. It was Sean. He was doing. I will survive. He got three quarters of Ray's song, and suddenly the sound went off. And I looked over, and the computer was shutting down. I thought, oh no! And I knew exactly what it was. Um, 
uh, that we'd run out of uh, run out of lecky. The battery had died, so you know I'm putting this thing back together again and trying to fill in by talking because there's no sound now. There's no music. There's nothing. Just a bit of a rowdy crowd in there. And one of them shouts out, tell us a joke. I said, well, I don't know any jokes. He said, go on, tell us a joke. I said, well, I said, you wouldn't like my jokes. So go on, go on, because they're all a bit lefty in there, right? I said, all right, then. Well, one of the worst things you can do in here is call someone by the wrong pronoun. Well, that complete silence. They were horrified. <laughs> Of course, which made me find it highly amusing. And you see that that's just it. I find very lots of things amusing. If you take a negative view on life and just see wrong everywhere, then you're a very unhappy person. I'm not saying not you generally, I think. And there's plenty of those people out there. They're constantly negative, looking for little faults all the time or finding finding wrongs in everything. These people are never happy. Never happy. Yeah. Oh, I thought you died um, then <laughs> for one moment. Yeah. No, I, I, I was just amused by what happened. Do you think, do you think, do you think you'll get to 60, Dan? Oh, I don't know. I just... Um, be. Yeah, I just want to live each day as it comes and just... Yeah. And and if I just go, you know, uh, too early, then I'll just be... I'll just be grateful that I had... Yeah. The, I mean, I won't be grateful for the, for the first 40 years, except... The only thing I can... So what I've found is this... There's been a bit of a divide in my life. The a divide? Thing, What's divided yeah. you? Well, because when I got to me... Well, more, I think... My legs just used to be quite divided. Uh, carry on. Just as I was approaching 41. How long ago was I, that? Well, um... It was about four was or five July years, 21. is it? 21. How long? Well, it was, I was July 21. I was 41. Oh, oh sorry. Yes, yeah. Right. So it works like that, you see. And I think what it was, the turning point happened... At the moment that I had the COVID injection, the the first one. Turning point of what? Of of my, my life, how I like viewed things and and all that, you know. I I wasn't happy up to that point. Right. And and I just felt I had the COVID injection, and it knocked me for six. And right. after that was when I, I spent that Monday night completely out, you know, just didn't have a clue what was going on. And then uh, Tuesday... So are, are you saying bit... the, the COVID injection made you happy? Is that what you're saying? Well, eventually, after a few days, it actually just, like, changed my life. I just didn't so think that... I, I just didn't feel... I felt, a, I felt a different man. Really? What was his after name? I had it. What was his name? Well, his name was proper. I can't say that, can I? Want it? Oh my God! Have you been <laughs> feeling the man? Well, head. you're a dark horse. We didn't know that, did we, gang? <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think the only decent thing I think from the first forty years was, I mean, I, I've got to stop. It, it was our granddad. I can't. I you know, obviously, I get get shot if I didn't. If I said the whole the first forty years was crap, but now I find. It's what should granddad got to do with all this? Oh well, he, he was the best man ever in my life. He was the only the first oh, okay. ten years of my life. Oh, okay, granddad. so your granddad died and you've never got over it. I get that. No, no, yeah, well, you know, I, I mean, he was, uh, yeah, he was just the best man I've ever known. You know, he was sort of like he could take you out and and he, he'd let you get away with murder. <laughs> it just uh, how old we were you? Had this, were you little at the was, time? Uh, were you little? Uh, well, uh, up to... He he actually died a week before my 11th birthday. Right. And he actually... And I, I always think, in a way, he died a bit like Tommy Cooper, you know, because you know Tommy Cooper, as uh, you could say, died doing what he loved doing. Yes. Well, our granddad died, you know. He died... He actually died in the street on his way to visit us. He actually died down the other end of... Well, the middle of our street. Mm. And so he could say he died doing what he loved and coming to see us. And um, he, he would, oh, he'd do, he, he'd, he once let me get away with uh, actually tape recording the sound of the underground. He actually, uh, about 15, 20 minutes on Mile End Station, actually 
tape recording what, the train what, going What through. do you mean he let you get away with it? Was that an illegal thing to do then or well, something? Well, no, no, but it was like... My mum and, mum and Auntie Shirley wouldn't have let, let me do that. Well, I think my mum did let me, but she was always a bit like, ooh, don't really want him doing it, but I suppose, well, if he has to... You know, and... Um, and then I think we had this um, recording of uh, Bo Road as well, with with Mind the Gap coming through it. And and he'd gone, Mind the Gap, and he'd gone, Shut your trap. And you... that recording, that I mean, sadly, the tape's no longer with us, but it's like that recording for a few years that after he died, because there was this recording of Mind the Gap, Shut your trap, and then him going, Shut your trap, and all that. And and we just, and he, I think the thing was like, Granddad, We've not got a single unhappy memory of him. Every memory is is happy of him. You know, he's he was, um, always a bit like you know having a bit of doing a bit of a turn up the navy club if they ever wanted um, someone to you know get on the stage and do a turn. He'd always be doing that, and uh, I think that's where I get I get my side of humour from from him really. And uh, I think I'm very proud to actually. Uh, you know, be like that, really. Just, uh, you know, never be negative. Mm. So you should be. Yes. and Been a uh, long time, but, hasn't it? What's that, been 40-odd 30, 30 years he's been gone? Yes. And, uh, you know, and I still, every day I still think of him. Of course you do. Yeah. Do you ever talk to him in the house? Hmm. Yeah, I, st- I say things like, I say things and then I think, yeah, well, we, we both know that, don't we, Granddad, you know, and, and all that. Do you think you're mad because you're walking around the house talking to him? No, I think it's, um... Because if you do, don't. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing yeah, wrong with no, that. No, I think it's just, um... Just everyone like, walks, just everyone walks around the house talking to people that have gone. Everyone does it. Yeah, because it's our only, um, I suppose it's our only contact, isn't it? With our, Do, like, well, I mean, I, I don't know. Have you ever had any experiences? Perhaps been, I don't know, a sudden rush of air or a touched or anything? Something falling off a mantelpiece? You ever had anything like oh, that? Oh, well, you mean um, ghosty? Stuff? Yes, ghosty type stuff, yeah. Uh, no, no. You've I've, not? Okay. I think, I think, for so, oh, I might. I might have had some occasional visions of somebody, just like just about one or two seconds of thinking that mm. someone else was in the room. Right. And then I realised, oh, yeah, you know, it's not. But that's all it is. I swear, it's just a visualisation. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. something. You know, it's, we all know it's not really there, but it's, you think. Well, no, yeah. Do, do you? Why, is, why do you know it's not really there? How do you know? Well, well I How do you yeah, know? Not, yeah. You don't, don't know, know that. You don't yeah. know that. Perhaps someone is coming to visit me and wish me good, good night and God bless and all that and see me take over a little wooden bed. Anyway, no, actually, I've just realised, Chris, so you're going back to what I, what I actually was in a previous life. Well, uh, I always thought I was... I could have been pussycat because I, mean, I just love all this. You know, it's all the actual. Uh... How do we go from that to pussycat? Because <laughs> I was waiting to come back to it for ages. How do you go from that See? to a pussycat? God's sake, man! You've because yeah, oh, I've got to tell you, you have touched me tonight. You have touched uh, me tonight. Oh, if oh my. Bad, but I can. Because I get it. I get that. I get that completely, that you still miss someone so strongly 30 years ago, and I'm afraid that will probably never go. That will no. never go. It's just yeah. how it is, and you've learned somehow to live with it. As many people do, people die, you've got to learn to live with it, and that's it. Because <clears throat> there's no other way around that. No. You know, you have touched me tonight. Anyway... Finish off on the cat story, then. What, you you think he was a pussy cat once? Why is this? Is someone coming and stroking you? And if so, have they been arrested yet? <laughs> <laughs> My friend, uh, well, we've got someone on TikTok there, Mark DJ. Sp- uh, sorry, Mark, um, who says, "What the heck? The jab made you happy." 
<laughs> That's just a weird thing, isn't it? That is. You're quite right, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because before then, in the old, you know what I said about what they called me at school. Uh, if you, you imagine what it was, yeah. imagine all, all, all the swear mm. words in the world. I would actually then, you know, I'd look back on it and actually think, yeah, you know, maybe mm. they were right. Perhaps, perhaps I was a little <laughs> word we can't use. A, li- uh, a little what? Uh, what cat? <laughs> no. I'm Give me a- the first two letters of that word. Um, either S H. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you could have said you could, have said you could have said you could change the words. If you want to use a swear word, change the words. You could say "little piece of crap." That's not a swear word, is it? You can always oh. change the word. You know, like for example, "I mucked up earlier." Yeah, you can always change the word. You don't need to swear. I tell you what, you've you've seen me in real life. You know, when you come to the karaoke, I have one of the worst mouths ever. You ask Vera. I'm constantly, yeah. and she likes to use. I like quite like the term actually, cussing. I cuss all the time, big time. But there's something in me that the moment a microphone comes on in a little, whether it's a pre- proper BBC studio or a little bedroom like this, the moment that comes on, I don't want to swear. It may come out in context, right? which in my mind is acceptable, but I avoid... I, I don't even need to think about it. It just stops the moment a mic comes on. And I just wish that when Ross Patzelt's mic came on, he automatically stopped farting. But that won't ever happen, will it, I suppose? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, mind <laughs> you, but that does his... Now we, you see, me, me and Ross think, you know, you, you just can't get this music playing out for some reason. Uh, but, but, but I think it's because you need a mixer. However, you don't need to be playing music. You really don't. You can just do a chat show. You You're perfectly all really right. Yes. Well, what have you just been doing now? You've well, just done it I'm... now. I've hardly interrupted you at all. You know, I've sat here, sat here listening... And you, you, you don't need to be playing music. Neither does Ross or I. We, we play music because, we, well, I mean, I, it's a completely different thing I do in the morning. I do three completely different things now, don't I? You know, you could yeah. do a chat show with no music, then you wouldn't have to buy a mixer because the, 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 the voice actually sounds quite good through that crap microphone that you're using. <laughs> no. Oh, my God, what's that Sorry, happening there? A, what's happening there? I just had a, a sudden rush of... Um... Sudden rush of something to the. I don't the believe you've ever rushed anything. And and um, I think the only reason I do the music mm. is is because I like the idea that I've picked all the tunes. Well, you can't because it doesn't work. It doesn't work for you unless you buy some stuff and you're able to wire it up. Because you're nowhere near any of us. We can't come round to you and and, and set it up once you've got it. Yeah, my, I, well, I my, thought the last show I did. I I, I, play, I listened back on the phone and I thought the music was oh, all that's right. no good. You can't listen back on a phone to check the quality. You've got to listen back on decent speakers. And let me tell you, the quality of that music was not good. Wasn't good. Oh. You listen on the phone, you can't tell the quality of music on a blooming phone. Yeah. Unless you've got decent but headphones on, of course. But the reason I play that is because... I, I want to play a, something different. I want to play a selection of music that no one else has ever heard of. Because I think if, you know, some... I mean, some... It can be a bit predictable, you know. I mean, it's, it's like if so-and-so plays, I don't know... Um, mm. Hello to Kim. Oh. Evening to Kim. Well, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Mm. Well, because, well, you know, well, well, just like pop, I suppose. If someone plays pop records, I think, well, yeah, I know I expect you to do that. And, and I know that one because I heard it from yesterday from another DJ or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always try and choose these tunes that I think no one else has ever heard of. Well, only that means me. they... Only I know them because yeah. I researched them. Well, that's all well and good, but they may not like that. Yeah, <laughs> I try and choose the most up, but, you know, the ones that the happy right, ones. Right, well, it, it, my advice to you is, unless you're willing to spend out a bit of money on a, on a mixer and a little gadget 
So that which you plug into the you, you you plug this little gadget into your um into your USB socket, which I haven't got one here with me, otherwise I'd show you. Um, you plug it into your USB socket, it gives you a line out and a line in, which most laptops, unless you want to do that, then you can do radio shows, but you can't do music. You can just have to talk, as I as I do on a Tuesday night, and I could do now, well, but basically I am, really. I only shoved in a song to, to put one in, really. didn't need to do that, and I'm going to do another one in a minute. Okay, <coughs> all right. Well, I would take your advice on board. Right. Book a show. Get your, get get yeah. some stuff written down on a piece of paper. You know, doing you could do it some the night before or something like that, or, or or a few hours before. Get some newspaper cuttings or or pages up up. I wouldn't put too many tabs open on a on a browser on your computer because it does sound it's not a particularly good one, but it certainly carries out. I mean, perhaps you want to print something out and have some stuff written down in front of you to fall back on, and off you go. Oh yeah. Oh well, that, yeah, that's what news cutting because that reminds me there was this newspaper cutting um, years ago that um, just so it fell back on itself really that apparently postman Mark Grogan who had, well this this postman called Mark Grogan he'd um, he won a delivery <laughs> postman Mark Grogan he won a competition with Royal Mail right. To, Name a salting of a new salting office in yes. Lee Grave. His winning right. suggestion was Lee Grave salting office. Oh right, okay. Postman mm. Mark Grogan. So, and on that to... bombshell, <laughs> I think we better. All right, Dan. There. Thanks for calling in yeah. tonight. Okay. See you soon. Bye-bye, okay. Dan. Yeah, there we yeah. are. Dan Woodhouse for you there calling in, boys. He goes, such a short call today. I can't believe he was only on there for such a short period of time. Uh, hello to Gareth. Gareth Cottrell says, come on, Chris, only four viewers. Ah, yeah, but that's only on Facebook. We're also on YouTube and TikTok as well, OK? you find us on your YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reed in the UK. Uh, TikTok. TikTok is Chris Reed in the UK. And also on the radio on reachonair.com. All right, Gareth, that's how it works. Um, <laughs> Mark is sending me these messages. I love it. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Maureen says, I'm glad you had a nice birthday. Is the teddy from Claridge's? Yes, it is. I've got a teddy behind me, yeah? Sitting in the studio. Those of you can that see it, if you're listening on the radio, it's a little Claridge's teddy, okay? And it's dressed in like a black outfit. And my mate got me this. As part of my birthday present, it's all very sad, really, isn't it? And he had it embroidered with my name, uh, and it says Chris on the side. He, he he got one for himself done as well. It said he was a little bit disappointed because his these were on our pillows when we went down. Uh, what did we go down for? I don't know. I can't remember. We went downstairs. When we came back, these were sitting on our pillows, right? And it says Chris on there, and his hadn't been engraved. He weren't happy. Let me put this back. He weren't happy that it wasn't um, sort of not not engraved. Um, oh, you know when they, what's that called? Embroidered. It, it wasn't embroidered. He was so upset by that. <laughs> Dear me. Uh, did we say hello to Kim joining us there on TikTok? Good evening to you, Kim. Um, Ross says he might be able to take calls on Facebook Messenger on his computer. That might work, or just talk, and that's it. And take messages. I I wouldn't. I wouldn't get him to do anything too technical, to be honest, Ross. Um, but he can certainly just open a microphone and talk, don't he? You know. OK. Um, let's just uh, keep up there. Thank you. Gareth says, oh, good to see a traditional talk show. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Gareth. Yeah, I've been doing this for some time now, actually. Um, uh, as an audio-only show. This has been going about 16 years, actually, probably. Uh, Shania would know. I think it's about sixteen years, and then some time ago, quite a long, quite a long time ago, I just put a camera in front and we did it on there as well. But uh, yeah, and I enjoy doing it. You know, just talking to people and all that. Um, quite a lot of the time, certainly on LBC now, it's just so political all the time, and we like to just talk about normal things. You know, little bits of news and this, that, and the other. Um, but the the LBC, I, I kind of went away from LBC. It just became just constant political 
claptrap all the time and it was too much. Hello to Chloe's mum. Evening to Chloe's mum today. Happy late birthday. Hope you had a wonderful day. Thank you, Chloe's mum. And Vera's on the line. Good evening, Vera, from Vera's Choice in the morning. Good evening, Chris. Hello, that's London. Come that, in, London. That, Sorry? That's something you can't do, which is normal. Normal is not your middle name, is it? I don't do normal, no. no have you, have you, you ever met... Normal. normal people are just so boring. <laughs> they really are boring. You know, oh, it's just... Yeah. I don't understand them. I mean... <laughs> Well, we, we, we did a kind of a semi-normal thing on Sunday, didn't we, for the ABBA? You enjoyed it, um, didn't you? So, what What was yeah. your um, favourite? Did you have a favourite part or did you just enjoy the whole thing? Well, there? the favourite part, I mean, the event was um, brilliant. I mean, I'm not mm. a massive, you have to be a massive, massive ABBA fan to really get into the, all the songs and the lyrics. I mean, I knew of the uh, the well-known stuff, but other stuff, people were singing the songs to it I didn't know. Um but um, obviously they did go full force in wearing costume wigs and the whole shebang. Oh, yes. They yeah, that, yes, there are people... You don't that, want to mess um, around with those. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, and and, and spend and, and look fantastic as well, you know. In a, yeah. they got like the white outfits and the gold yeah. chains and things hanging around. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've never really been very good myself at doing costumes and things like that, you know. But uh, I mean... From what I gather, I mean, what I saw looks as though they still had those costumes in their wardrobe and just got them out every now and again. They could well yeah. have been. I they mean, if I had, them. if I'd have bought that costume a while ago, my fat ass wouldn't have got into it now. I'm telling you that, my love. <laughs> 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 yes, it was a, um, a very eventful um, show. I mean, apart from. The woman that was in front of me, oh, that gotcha. was annoying me. But then that was, yeah. that was, and apart from the person that kept... Um, oh, the bloke biscuits. on his phone. Oh, I and couldn't believe it. To just explain why that's really annoying, it's a bit like a cinema. Would you Would you agree, yeah. uh, Vera? Yeah, so you're it's... in a dark cinema watching a big bright screen and then that's the right. light just glows next that's to right. you. That's right. It's very dark in there. The lights are uh, totally fantastic in there. The lasers mm. and there's a TV screen, but the the rest of it's all in complete darkness. One yeah. person, one person starts looking at a bleeding phone. No, uh, to be fair to him, he wasn't taking pictures or anything because they're no. very, very. Str I don't know if you saw anyone get jumped on in there. No, um, actually, I didn't. No, I didn't either. We did see it last time that we went. But uh, I didn't see anyone taking pictures in there. But this bloke was obviously... And you had a woman do it, a girl, a young girl yeah, doing it as she well. she was just texting the whole time. And I don't just know why. texting. And this white light is next to you, or, you know, a few people away. But it's very, very distracting. Really distracting, isn't it, eh? Yes, you, had mm. the, you had the chat next to you. I had the woman next to me. Yeah, and yeah. I, I can't understand. I mean, if you're going to see a show, go and see the show. Mm, mm. If you don't want to see a show, go somewhere else. Yeah. But these people, not all of them, these people chose to spend the money, come to see the show, spent most of the evening texting and going backwards and forwards to the bar. Yeah. So yeah. they've missed two-thirds of the show by doing all this. Oh. Well, I just don't understand it. There, there's a lot of people, they go to these events to get drunk. I always yeah. remember once I was working for some bloke and um, I, I I was going to this Barry Manilow concert and I saved the money and I bought a front row ticket, as in front row. front start from My row and then the stage, right? I was really close. And um, he was on and I felt my phone go and I looked at it and it says, are you at the Manilow concert? Yes, we can see you. You're in the front. Where are you? Oh, it's fantastic. We're in one of the boxes and it's all free vodka. We're all getting drunk. And I thought, why are you there then? Why would you want to exactly. go to a concert to get drunk? You could sit at home and do that. Or go to and just the pub. play CDs, play all the CDs and, ha yeah, and have your drink, yeah. yeah. And it has to be said, sometimes you can be in those expensive seats. And What, what companies do is mm. they, they book out blocks of seats sometimes 
And, you know, oh, thanks for working with us this year. Uh, we've got um, five seats for the Barry Manlow concert, the Abba concert, whatever. There's your seats. And uh, we've also laid um, some drinks for you. Right, and they get these drinks. And by the time they sit in their seat, which could be next to you, they're right. raging. They're raging. They're so drunk. And it's just yeah. awful. And it's not fair to other people who have paid the money, like proper Manolo people. I, I wouldn't class myself as that. I'm a big Manolo fan, but I'm not a Manolo fanatic. There are, believe me, there are Manolo fanatics. The yes, same I as know. They, they the, yes, the, on the stage. Oh, good. The same that. as there will be, um, you know, like the little girl is like Harry Style fanatics and yeah. um, and those <clears throat> no direction, uh, one direction, but the big, big fat who are into them. And if you say something that is any way against that star, they go mad. There are people like that, believe it or not, Manolo. Of course, they're a little bit older. Um, and they would say something to that drunk person, you know, oh, or, God, or perhaps yes, kick yes. them up the I, arse. I, I, <laughs> I know, yes. When you've got a hardcore fan and you yeah. say something that they don't like, you you will know about yeah. it. Yeah. And no I have a feeling, you know, know if you was at my karaoke night, Vera, and someone said something bad about me, I have a feeling you'd be a little bit like that, my love. I think you'd attack them. I do think that. <laughs> I do think I'll go that. For their ears. I think Maureen would as well. I got a feeling Maureen would attack them. Maureen's like a little Yorkshire terrier. <laughs> Might be small, but she's got a big bite. Ah, uh, and a lovely voice as well. She's with us tonight, of course, aren't you, Maureen? Yeah. She's always with Hi, us Maureen. on our show. There, say hello to Maureen. There we go. <laughs> I have a feeling that, that I might well be losing my voice because of um, Sunday. How it was so cold in that waiting area. Um. um you know how cold it was. Even oh, yes. We, we didn't. Yeah, yeah. It's not heated. Uh, crazy. It must have been like minus one in that area. Isn't and then that when crazy? you go into the main uh, arena, yeah, it yeah. was about 110 degrees. And it's well, like one you know, extreme you, to the you, other. You, you didn't even need to feel that. You know, as indicated by the members of staff walking around in thick coats, hats, and gloves. Yeah. They yeah. were freezing themselves. Freezing it was like themselves. A snow dome. Yeah. I've just got a little, little on the subject of the um, people on phones. Uh, Al Merlin says, uh, one thing I can't stand is people and mobile phones at theatres and events. Last yeah. show I went to was in the West End and a lady, I use the term loosely, <laughs> I think we know what you mean by that, Merlin, smuggled in a kebab and what? ate it while texting her friends. The ushers oh evicted them during the interval. Goodness. Good. I later found out they complained and got given a refund. Oh, dear. You know, it just amazes me that they say, please don't do this. But, but people think they got the right to do anything they want. They really do. And uh, I, I don't if, understand it. It's I tell very, you what, annoying. if someone sat next to me after I've paid good money for a seat in the theatre, because you know I love my theatre. Yes, and yes. sat next to me with a kebab, that kebab will fly across the room because it will be smacked out of their hands and then that would be it, end of story. And I'll give them the look and they Ooh. will say, no, nope, don't touch me. Oh, you're so violent, Vera. I'm getting a little bit scared not... now, to be honest, Vera. <laughs> I get a little bit I'm scared a, of I'm you, darling. A, huh? I'm not a violent person by nature. No, I'm seriously. sure you're not. I, when have you, have you ever seen me lose my temper? I don't lose my temper. No, I haven't, actually. You just kind of mumble I'm a under very your breath. Calm. <laughs> it takes a lot for me to lose my temper. Do you know? I feel. I feel. I feel. You or Paul deal with the situation. I just walk away from it. (laughs) I normally press the button and see what happens and walk away. The the cinema is probably the worst one for these things. You know, Um, uh, Weird City says appalling theatre etiquette. It really is. Actual fact. You know, when we went to the ballet, um, to be fair, there was a bloke sitting right next to us, and he was fidgeting a lot. He was fidgeting a lot, but he didn't have a phone out or anything like that. He just kept fidgeting all the time. Um, But, you know, when you go to the ballet, these are expensive tickets. Of course. And let me tell you, when those lights go down, you can hear a pin drop. Wow. No one says a word. There's no phones. You never see a phone come out or anything like that. You know, and the other thing with the phones coming out, and I've said this before, when you see some of these youngsters at, uh, for example, uh, a Justin Bieber concert, right? Mm. And they, I presumably, would have paid quite a lot of money for something like that, I suppose. And 
they watch the entire. They're sitting right up, right up front to the stage, right close to the stage, and they watch the entire show through a little one-inch screen <laughs> that they're holding up. Right, the camera of the phone is not still. They're jumping up and down all over the place. And I then they upload these videos onto their Facebook walls and that, and they stay on there for a couple of minutes, and then they get taken down through copyright issues. Who on earth wants to watch a video that's jumping up and down like that? Please answer me that question. And they've missed the show. They've missed the show. I said this the last time... Um, um, the lady in question that took... See, now, I'm an um, Android person, and I know you're an iPhone person. Yeah. Now, I made the biggest mistake on Sunday when I asked the lady um, if she could take a picture of us. Now, what I should have done, done was I should have asked her if she was an iPhone person because she would not have got a hold of my phone because iPhone people, no disrespect to you, do not know how to use Android phone and vice versa. The pictures she took... As you saw, I don't know what was going on with that picture. It was it was a moving image out of focus. Yeah. It was an out-of-focus image. And I thought, what happened here? And all your pictures were great, apart from mine. Well, because, yeah. Because you're all iPhone people. I think, well, you seem to have got a, an iPhone. You seem to have had a few pictures of other stuff going on. You don't miss a trick, do you, my love? Do you no. Yeah, I mean, that's all I'm I, saying. Well, I certainly don't. It's all I'm I mean, saying. I, could, I no. I certainly don't. You see, this is this is what I used to do. That was my job in publicity, you know, organize, organizing photo shoots. Mm, mm. So I know how to organize a photo shoot, and that was one of the, well, that was a photo shoot for me. Yeah, well, good on you, girl. You got a few well, anyway, pictures for me, anyway. <laughs> I'm going <gonna>, <laughs> to love you and leave you because I know you've got a lot to get through before the witching hour. We've only got 16 minutes left. It's gone so quick I know, tonight. It's the witching hour. So yeah. I'm going to call it. Uh, cut it short and let you get on with your bits and pieces. All right. And uh, uh, there's a, me voice back. There's a message I'll here. Cl Friday. Chloe's mum says Vera's a beast. <laughs> a beast. <laughs> a beast she is. Thanks, Vera. Only, only, only on full moon. <laughs> Tell our darling. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye, my love. There's our Vera uh, in London, gang. Chris Reardon, Tuesday night. Reach on. Righty, a very good evening to uh, Ray Reynolds, who's uh, sent a little message in. Hello to you, Ray, who says he's just back from seeing Johnny Ball and Zari at uh, Leicester Square. Enjoyed the show and got to meet them too. What were they doing then? Johnny Ball. Is that Johnny Ball as in children's television on the BBC? And oh my God, was, was he 80s or 70s, Johnny Ball? He's lost all his air now. What was it he used to do on the telly? I'm just trying to think what Johnny Ball used to do on the telly. Did he have like a a, a um? Was it like a technology thing he used to do? I can't remember Johnny Ball. It's so long ago. Did he like show you how how to do things and and what have you? You know, I'm not not quite sure what he used to do there. Um, Dan says normal people are just so boring. Exactly what I've been saying. <laughs> oh dear all right uh ray reynolds oh you texted that as well same message there yeah what does johnny ball and zoe ball do in their show as a matter of interest because i've got not a clue what they would do i'm sure he used to show us gadgets and things like that didn't he johnny ball maybe hey Something like that, maybe. Hello to Rumble Bumble. Evening to you. Just in from work. Blooming cold out there. Oh, yeah, tell me about that. I must say that room was particularly hot that we were staying in. Um, and we only had it set to, like, 17 degrees. And uh, unfortunately, um, when I go away um, to wherever, and this includes going up to... Uh, my caravan up in Lincolnshire, which my nephew once again has been working on. Thanks very much. People are sending me little gifts on uh, on Facebook. I've just got a chili from John. Thank you, John. And I, I, I have trouble sleeping when I'm not at home. Always have had. I've always had a problem sleeping whenever I'm way at, way at home. And that, you know, that room we, we stayed in, 
uh, we were, I don't know if you know, have you stayed, I bet you must have stayed at Claridge's Merlin. We had uh, a Mayfair balcony suite. It was just so nice. Um, you will see that. I have got some video clips. It's not very long, probably two or three minutes, that's all. But I've got some video clips I did of the room and the balcony outside. Um, and also the spa. We got a couple of little videos while we were downstairs in the spa as well. So hopefully I'll put those together. They may get uploaded tonight. I don't feel particularly tired now because I had a little sleep in the car. I did... We had a, he um, he bought me an afternoon tea as well. He's done a few little bits and pieces for my birthday, my mate, for my 60th. And he's 50, of course, uh, in April as well, my mate. There's a 10-year gap between us, um, which is strange, really, because, of course, I look so much younger than him and most people. As you know, I am known as the Peter Pan of the DJ world. You perhaps didn't know that, but that is true. That is absolutely true. Um... And he got us an afternoon tea today, which was our, like, final event. The the day this morning... Um, let me just read a couple of these. Uh, we've done Gareth's message there, haven't we? Uh, we've done Ray Reynolds. Darren Askew's there. Hello, Darren. Google, he was on Kids TV doing science and tech. I thought so. Thank you, Darren. You've become a researcher for me, Darren. Thank you, Darren, you gorgeous hunk. Thank you. Jimmy D's there as well. Tony Hart, Johnny Ball did animals, if I recall. No, 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 that wasn't Johnny Ball. Oh, uh, that was Animal Magic. Um, Johnny... Oh, Lord. Jo Animal who did Animal Magic? Dan, who did Animal Magic? No, Johnny Ball wasn't Animal Magic. He was definitely science and tech, as Darren says. I remember. Who... Hang on, let's have a look. Who... Who... Presented animal magic. The words jo the word Johnny's definitely in it. Johnny Morris, Johnny Morris. What a lovely old bloke he was, mucking around with tigers and monkeys and all this business. He was wonderful. He was good. Yeah, Johnny Morris. There you go. There you go. And Merlin says Johnny Bowl used to present a number of things again on the BBC. Uh, Merlin did indeed stay at Claridge's. Um, he always looks after, they always look after him. It's fantastic, isn't it, really? It's really good there. We were staying at a Mayfair balcony suite, um, uh, Merlin. I don't know if you've been in there yet. They're one of the new new ones there. And uh, you, you, you just can't fault it in there. You, you just can't fault it. I must tell you, we, we got there yesterday and um, we got there a little bit too early. So we went in the bar and we had a, a pizza. And uh, a lovely pot of tea while we were getting the room ready. And then at the time, um, the lady came in. She said, she said, oh, just to let you know, your room's ready. Pop out to the reception. I'll give you your keys whenever you're ready. She came and found us. And the thing is, in this hotel, it's really personal. And you'll get this, Merlin. It's really, really personal in there. And without you having to tell them... When you go and do something, what your room number is or whatever, they know. I don't know how they do that. Whether a little photograph goes around to all their computers, I don't know. But it's like, you know, well, we had this pizza and this cup of tea and this delightful barman or whatever he was came over and served us and said, um, oh, we don't know our room number yet. Don't worry, I'll find out. And like, well, how, I'm like, you know, how is he going to find out? But they do. You know, there it, there it is. There's all your stuff itemised on the bill at the end of the day. So we had these, and then we went upstairs, and we were just gobsmacked by this room. Absolutely gobsmacked by this beautiful new room. All the marble in the, in the, in the bath. Oh, my word, the bath, the shower. And, you know, I think my favourite part, and I mentioned this on the show this morning, was the toilet. The toilet in our room, probably the same as all the other rooms, it had a... <laughs> you open the door to the toilet, and as you open the door, the seat opens on the toilet. Now, you can look these up if you want to, boys and girls. This will appear... 
this will appear in the video that I've yet to put, but it's almost done, actually. I've just got to put the video together and upload it. It will be on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reed in UK. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, I'll put a link up there when it's done. It may or may not be tonight. I've just got a few bits to do anyway. Um, so I haven't sorted out the hymns for Sunday either yet. So loads to do, loads to do. And this, this, this toilet seat comes up. <laughs> wow, look at this. Ron! I said to my mate, Ron, look, look at this, look at this. Come running in. <laughs> uh, of course, it won't do it now because the seat was up. You know, I kept closing the door, waiting for the seat to come down. It must, it must take a while to go back down again. Anyway, um, <laughs> Vera says, do you think we could have these toilets in Central Station? Well, I don't know. You might not want to move out of the toilet then, Vera. <laughs> Thank you, Heidi. Johnny Morris says that. That's the one. Um, right. So the toilet opens. Right. And then you take your trousers down. And then you sit down. And it's a heated seat. It's a heated seat. I think it's plastic. Right. So I sat there, done my business, and then on the wall I spotted a remote control with various different pictures of it. As I say, if you want to look this toilet up, do type in Toto, T-O-T-O, Washlet, W-A-S-H-L-E-T, Toto Washlet. And there's a ver various pictures. There's one picture of like a spraying water. So while I'm sitting there, I've pushed this button. A little bit of noise, a little bit of noise is going on, there's a little bit of a delay. And suddenly, this warm water is sprayed directly after the, shall we say, dirty area. And it is the most wonderful feeling ever. I mean, I could have, I could have just, my whole holiday, I'll be honest with you, my whole, what was it, there were 26 or 27 hours there, I think I would have been quite happy just to sit on that toilet and have this water just pouring up into me. So you see, <laughs> honestly, if you've never, if you've never done that before, you've got to try it. Anyway, once that's finished, there were also other little buttons on there. And if you push them, the water starts pumping out. You know, instead of coming in a constant stream, it goes. Poof, poof, poof. <laughs> OK. And then there's another button. You push it and it starts moving up and down your slot. <laughs> I can't tell you how wonderful it feels. Right, and then you push another button. It looks like a like an air, like a cloud or something. I push this button, and immediately the water stops, and gentle warm air is pointed into the same area that the water had been blowing out, and starts um, uh, drying you off. It is the most wonderful experience ever. I cannot tell you, sitting on that thing. Mark, have you ever tried one of those Mark bowls? Have you ever tried one of those, dear? <laughs> so that was that was the toilet. Yeah, it was wonderful, and it's it's that good. I'm considering. I was going to use some money. I've got a little bit of pension money coming, and I was going to use that to pay down some mortgage. But I think I want one of those toilets. <laughs> I'll have people coming round wanting to use it, won't I? I really want one of those toilets. Have you got one, Merlin, at your place? That's the sort of thing you've done. Merlin says, on the subject of the uh, staff, the secret is training. They build profiles. The butler in who looks uh, looks the room knows how I like the bed made, how I like the bath towels folded, what time I want tea and coffee or cold drink. It's spooky having worked in the industry. The attention to detail is second to none. You pay what you pay because of the staff service level, which is a million out of ten. I mean, it's that good. You cannot want for anything. My mate, I mean, uh, to be honest, I was trying to have a sleep at one point and the blooming doorbell kept ringing because he kept ordering stuff. 
<laughs> Stuff kept coming home. <laughs> Jason says it sounds like an automatic car wash. <laughs> Uh, Batsy Bob's with us. Hello, Batsy Bob. All right. Didn't know you did night shows. Yeah, every Tuesday, 9 till 11 here at Reach On Air. Okay, every Tuesday, 9 till 11. I did have one more song lined up, but well, I've I've missed the time on that one now. So what do we need? A, a three-minute... I've got a three-minute song. Yeah, okay, I've got a three-minute song. Right, I'm going to have to wrap it up there, boys and girls. So Ross Patzel has enjoyed the uh, show tonight. Thanks very much for all your uh, kind messages this evening. I'm back with you at Reach On Air tomorrow morning, uh, just after the nine o'clock news, boys and girls. All right, I hope you'll be able to join us then. And... <laughs> Okay, we're all done this evening. Thanks ever so much, gang, and uh, all your messages and that. Sorry, I, I, I'm just it's really, like I said to you right at the beginning of the show, you know, you get towards the end and you start buzzing, trying to get the time right so that the song finishes without being cut off. I can't stand that on radio shows and people not timing it correctly so it doesn't finish. Um, it's, it's bad enough missing it by a couple of seconds, and we all do that. But when people, like, play half a bloody song or, like, 10 seconds of a song and then the news comes on. I just, I can't stand that. Anyway, we're all done. Thanks ever so much. And uh, we've got another uh, YouTube show tomorrow morning if you want to join us there. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea and I'll see if I can put this Claridge's video together. But it won't be, uh, if I can do it now, it won't be up sort of before midnight. All right. Just because of the way things work. 
Is Heidi still with us? She kept sending me this message here that said the clock was wrong on YouTube, and it's not. The clock is not wrong on YouTube. Why do you think the clock's wrong on YouTube? And she sent me a little picture. The clock wasn't wrong on YouTube at all, was it? Tuesday the 7th, Tuesday the 7th, 2023. There's the clock. I don't know why she was saying the clock was um, uh, wrong. Uh, yeah, Mark, you might, uh, lovely Mark. Uh, all right, Mark wants to see the uh, video there. I'm glad you enjoyed the show there. Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow night. Uh, that'll be on YouTube and TikTok and Facebook Live tomorrow night. We don't do the radio on Wednesday night, and we're only an hour, okay, 9 till 10 o'clock, and it's just me rabbit and crap, <laughs> as usual. See you soon. Bye-bye now. All right. <laughs>